Hello, everybody. As you know, this is the podcast World Order. Uh, we realized that we had some audio issues and some other things going on with our uh, video that we had put up last night. So, uh, Ryan, being the head of talent relations, as always, rolling the dice, uh, got all of us who were there in Nashville together tonight for this uh, quick NGW review from Nightmare in the Old City. Um, if you missed our show last night, uh, I apologize, but hopefully this will make up for it. Um, and hopefully, if you did see our show last night, uh, hopefully we're able to go into a little bit more detail on, on the actual matches and things that we liked and, and things like that, uh, since we have everyone who was at the show. Um, but as you know, I'm the host, Matt. With me, as always, head of talent relations, head of talent relations. Huh. Words are hard mm. on a Tuesday night. Watching NXT 2.0 got me messed up. Ryan Coddington himself. <laughs> Listen, two things. First of all, NXT 2.0 is the worst thing on television right now. And take it to the bank, okay? Because if I got to listen to Mandy Rose try and cut a promo, okay, to open your show, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Second of all, shout out to the No Disqualifications <laughs> podcast. You can find them on Apple Podcasts. You can find the link to that on my Twitter. Um, that is at PW Ryan. And, of course... You know him and you love him. He was wrestling royalty himself, the wrestling purist, Jeff Hitman Hall. Hello, hello. Uh, so, guys, hey, we made it back from Knoxville yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun, yeah. fun trip, as always. Uh, and a really fun wrestling show, in my opinion. Um, uh, and if, if, if I could just cut in real quick. Um, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. If you're keeping track or you're keeping score – it's seven, that's seven hours, ten or fifteen minutes for your boys to ride down there. So I'm, I'm if, you're, if you're questioning our dedication, you know, what I'm saying our love for pro wrestling. Let me see y'all drive seven hours someplace to watch wrestling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll the dice you onto a table. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys missed it, we live streamed a WCW show, and dear God, Reno was reintroduced into all of our lives um, horribly. <laughs> Um, God, the longest three yeah. hours of my life. Um, uh, it's not just that, but like it's there, and then you got to come back like two days later. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a quick for, like sixteen hours, just just traveling. Not even like when we got to Knoxville, moving around and everything. But God, they have such good food. Yeah, go Thank God mind. for crystals. <laughs> um, but man, this car was so much fun. I love these NGW shows. Um, this show is getting a lot of uh, notice for two specific injuries that happened on this show um, that we know our guys are feeling kind of guilty about. But uh, I stand by. I think they're freak accidents that just happened. Um, but I, there's a lot of really good and a lot of really fun stuff that happened uh, Sunday night. Show opens up with our, our our guys, the Lost Boys, Bradley Prescott, the fourth, and Adam Slade uh, coming out in Halloween costumes. Bradley Prescott is, of course, a can of Natty Light, and Adam Slade is dressed as Bradley Prescott. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so they're talking in the ring. They're cutting promo, saying, "Hey, you know, we try to be, you know, we try to get booked. They didn't have a match for us." Said we'd be in the uh, Halloween party or Halloween costume contest. Said we couldn't drink beer doing that. Um, you know, so they were saying that there was no role models on the show. You know, and of course, out comes no role models, the tag team of Team Ambition. Uh, Ryan, you have their names, ATM and... ATM and Don Eli Rossi. Uh, these are two guys that have been trained by the Matt Technician himself, Mr. Davey Richards. Um and these guys are young. Um, if you check out any of their other stuff, you know that they're going to be a team you need to keep an eye out for. Yeah, and, and I think they, they end up having a uh, kind of surprise tag team match open up here. This was not advertised. Uh, so no role models versus the Lost Boys. Lost Boys end up picking up the victory here. Of course. Um, a lot of upside, I think, to everybody in the ring. Lost Boys know who they are. They, they have their bit down. If you've Watched. I mean, these guys are all over the place putting on some fun matches. Uh, team no role models. I don't know if it's team no role models or just no role models. 
Uh-huh. It's just no role models. You can find them at, at no role models with a Z at the end, 13 on Twitter. Um, kind of surprised they didn't come out to the J. Cole song. That's just me. Um, but uh, a lot of upside. You know, you, you can see the Davy Boy, or Davy Boy, Davy Richards training. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely still, still young and, and, learning everything I think that they can, but it's definitely, I think a lot of upside to them. Yeah. Um, some, some, somebody get my boy, Johnny like Rossi some pants that fit, please. Golly. It's like, it's like he's out there and freaking joggers, you know, um, um, that he wasn't the only one on the show though, uh, that had that issue, but this is a fine opening match. Um, this is – there were only seven match matches announced. This was the one that wasn't um, – it felt it felt like a dark match. You know, you got some up-and-coming talent against, you know, two established guys on on, on your roster. And I thought um, – I thought the comedic spots were just enough to not get into, like, the hokey levels, as we'll see here late, later in the show. I enjoyed it. Jeff, thoughts? Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, I thought it was a uh... – it was a good match. I think in the, the world of wrestling, you know, we go to places and everybody wants to see the finished product. I mean, you just want to see um, Okada, Omega, Danielson. Um, but this match was was fun to see as in, you know, guys that are a little green, um, you know, one team leading, the other team following. But there's nothing wrong with that. I think there's there's simplicity in that. And it's it's good for wrestling to see that you know, everybody just doesn't wake up, roll out of bed and become a pro wrestler. Like, you know, I love seeing guys like working at it, you know, and so we'll, we'll look at them here. And then in three or four years, we're like, Hey, remember that match they had at at next gen. And like now, you know, and you can look back now there'll be stars or there'll be whatever they're going to be, but you know, it's just, it's it's always. Always happens like like that. Yeah. In indie shows and not like as an indie, as in bad, I'm tired of people using that, that, slinging that around like it's a bad word yeah yeah like it's derogatory um but it's something cool about seeing indie shows and seeing talent when they're first starting out um not to submarine the show but just like ring of honor you go see all those guys in 10 11 12 for 40 dollars and then you know four or five years later they're all global superstars so it just goes to show you everyone's got to start somewhere yeah i'm i'm very excited like i said i think the upside for these two uh, is pretty high. And, you know, Prescott and Slade are just fun to watch. They, they are a very um, fan-friendly live show. Uh, great wrestlers for that regard, you know. They are going yeah. to bring a lot of fun to a live experience. I, I'm not sure how well it always translates whenever it's uh, on TV or when you're watching yeah. on, like, fight. Um, I, I think so, but I also, like, just enjoy seeing Bradley Prescott anywhere uh, daddy 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 man I, I should have had i have two i have two of his shirts i just realized that i probably he's the guy i have the most ngw shirts of i hate nxt uh, ryan ryan get upset over there uh, i have to because we got to rank the shows every single monday live at 7 p.m on facebook on the wrestlecast but we can we can let it slide for the night. We'll we'll get to it on Monday here when we have to talk about it a bit more. Next match up is Crazy Steve versus God. I just I love him, Levi Everett, <laughs> the Amish assassin. I'm putting it over. Someone's got to take it at some point. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> that that sounds like you you might want to at him, uh, Matt. That 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 sounds. He's like Amish, a- Jeff. He doesn't use Twitter. Oh man, you know that's even better actually. Um, he is a correspondent. Who, uh, who PW, uh, 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 PW bringing him an Amish assassin shirt at the next show. Book it. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be like a machine gun in the shape of a butter churner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on, the back, on the back is going to say churn, 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 churn. <laughs> um, churning the business one day at a time. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I love Levi Everett. Of course, he brings out the butter churner. Um, I got to shake his hand. He's always such a like polite guy Thanks. coming around the ring. He doesn't do like the high five. He just, how are you doing? How are you he doing? Also, he also takes takes it. takes the time to do it, like which is yeah. great. Yeah, I love it. It's such a commitment to the gimmick. 
um, or real life. I mean, I don't know. It, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love him. He's fantastic. <laughs> um, crazy Steve comes out afterwards. He's crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> uh, there's nothing no, else really go at it there. Um, this match opens up with Crazy Steve being incredibly um, intrigued by the butter churner and fans uh, chant for Levi to teach him how to use the butter churner. Um, so they do. And uh, he teaching him. Crazy Steve's getting it. He's learning. He's learning. He's learning. And then he sneezes into the butter churner. <laughs> And, and like, Brilliant. of course, uh, you know me, sneezing in the COVID times without a mask on into someone's food, Levi stating, uh, this, is, this is how I make butter for my family. <laughs> Levi said, um, like Michael Jordan on the, on the last dance, he took it personally. <laughs> um, so these guys start going at it. Crazy Steve does end up picking up the victory with his diving DDT. Uh, once again, a very fun match. He does get up and goes, once again, I'm very sorry for sneezing at the butter churner. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, once again, just very fun, very comical, um, enjoyable. NGW is really good at that, I feel like. Really good at uh, making the live experience very fun for the people there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any thoughts from you guys on Crazy Steve versus Levi Everett? No, um, no, it's it's exactly what you said. Um, Levi is over, over, over. So when he comes out, the crowd goes crazy, and as well as they should. He's a really good wrestler. This gimmick is kind of um, it stands on its own. You know, he's he's definitely his own deal, and uh, I enjoy it. It's a good match. This is this this, this gimmick is book is booked perfectly for NXT 2.0. Not you're just staying locked in, man. I it's so bad. If you like it, you should take a long look in the mirror. But you know, like what you like, and don't be a dick. Right there, that one's for you. You uh, should con- you should contemplate life. <laughs> Brian, like what you like. Don't be a jerk. A little too late for that, considering we rank the shows every Monday. Yeah, yeah. Just because you rank them doesn't mean you gotta be a jerk, Bob. Next no, match not up being is... a jerk. I don't like it. Whoa, oh, hold on, hold the fuck up. Okay, hold on, because if we're gonna derail the show, you're not gonna cut me off. We're not okay? gonna derail the show, though. Like what you like, don't be a dick. That's fine, but if it's but if it's my opinion and I don't like it, and I don't think that you have a brain because you don't like it, I don't think it's me being a jerk. That's me giving my opinion on what you should do. Sure, but it has nothing to do with next gen. <laughs> I'm here to talk nightmare in the old city. I know, I know, NXT is on, but we'll get to that next Monday. Yeah, let's roll. Uh, next match up is the Free Underground. Come on, what? Freelance Underground Championship. Freelance Underground Championship held by Calvin Tankman. What my notes here only says FU Heavyweight Champion. <laughs> I'm not going to say that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Calvin Tankman as the champion successfully defending against Alex Taylor, Caden Sade, and Shane Andrews. Uh, once again, pretty fun match. Has a really crazy spot um, that they kind of went to a lot, I felt, with. Uh, with Tankman having one person either on his back or on his shoulders or in a power bomb and the other person in the world's strongest slam position um, and then something happening. Um, I feel like that happened a couple times too many, but there was one time where he had him where uh, God, I think it was Caden Sade in the world's strongest slam position and Andrews in the electric chair and Alex Taylor jumped off the top rope to give a cutter and like the whole thing, it was. I thought that was really cool. That was a cool spot. I don't see a whole lot of. Um, first time seeing Alex Taylor. Seems very fun. Um, big fan of his valet. Wish I knew their name. Um, 
I just wish he listened when I was saying, don't let, t- tell him to avoid the chops from Tankman. Nobody listened. <laughs> she was having fun with it too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, she also tried to beat up Shane Andrews while he was laying on the apron, which I thought was fantastic. Top notch. Uh, became a big fan on that one. Um, this, uh, um, go ahead. So for me, this match had, um, like you said, a couple of the spots were a little overdone, but I, I, I think the bigger picture here is, is not, picture here is not sliding everybody else. But Tankman, to me, is putting everybody on notice. I think he's a guy that's starting to um, ascend to another level. Um, you know, you, 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 you go out and you see wrestlers, you know, once you see him, you know, again, what, like we say in football, if he ain't getting better, he's getting worse. And he's continuously getting better and better and better and better. And he's starting to look, you know, in, in his matches, he's starting to look like the guy. And obviously yeah. he has a title, you know, so – a belt so somebody sees that and you know put a belt on him and that's I think he's headed in the right direction so I mean I, I wouldn't be surprised if you know here before long uh, I mean I, I mean I don't, I don't know if he's gonna be next gen heavyweight champion but he definitely has the chops and and the wherewithal to do it um, really 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 been enjoying his stuff not like I mean all the time yeah but Lately, uh, as we the, the more we've been watching him, especially live, you can see a guy on TV or a girl on TV, and it's just not the same. You know, seeing you know live wrestling trumps everything, but yeah, he's just really, really, really good, and I think he's about to take that that next step. I'm very excited for it. Honestly, I really enjoyed it. Ryan, I'm asking you to go ahead and give your notes, and then start into uh, the Triple Threat Women's Match. I'm gonna be right back. You're good. Let's go ahead and keep rolling. Um, all right, go ahead. Give your thoughts and hit the the women's. I'm gonna be right back. All right, we're gonna go to the women's match now. It's a triple threat match. Uh, Danny Mo uh, cosplaying as Trunks. Um, I feel like I'd get yelled at by the boss if I went into that one. Uh, taking on <laughs> Billy Starks and then taking on the mystery opponent um, as Ali Catch. Yes, Ali Catch from the, in, from the independent scene, um, cosplaying as her other persona, Ali Bat. Um, I thought this was a, I thought this was an above average triple threat women's match. Um, this was actually pretty dang good. Um, all women got a chance to shine here. Um, I, I like that all three of them were actually in some sort of costume. Um, yeah, there, there were spots galore in this thing. Um, and the fact that everybody got out healthy is beyond me. Uh, yeah, I agree. This was um, kind of almost reverse of the Tankman match, just in the sense of there were spots in here, but they didn't go to them too much, if that, may, you know, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Or maybe they were more organic. Um, but as a, tri- a women's triple threat, this is really good. Nobody... Uh, Nobody did, I mean, they didn't do anything that they couldn't do. The timing was right. The wrestling was right. It wasn't a bunch of, you know, waiting outside the ring while the other person, while the two, two people do their thing. No, it was the perfect mixture of uh, action and wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, and and kind of, like I said, with, with Tankman, I'm going to take the same stance on Danny Mo. Um, she was just on AEW as well, mm-hmm. but she's also another wrestler that is every time we go to see her, she gets better and better and better and better. And I don't mean better as in like to knock anybody. I, I mean like better as in like, she's just, she's just stepping her game up, you know, mm-hmm. and she's getting to a level that's really, really good. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if you see her sign somewhere or on TV weekly, you know, or, or an episodic TV show because she's starting to, she's just really, 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 really good. And, um, you know, I think the sky's the limit uh, for her as well. For sure. Yeah. Um, of course, Billy Starks does get the win. Uh, the boss is back, so I'll pass it back over. So, huh, sorry, laptop trying to die on me. Despite being like fully charged five seconds ago. Um, I thought this was a really fun match. Jeff, you're spot on. I think Danny Moe is an absolute star. Um, it, it's only a matter of time, I think. Um, additionally, Billy Starks, 
is so good for being so young. I mean, I think she's only 18. Um, I'm pretty certain she's still in high school, which is mind boggling to me. Um, I'm a, oh, it's too much light. Um, but uh, this is a pro uh, the surprise of Alley Catch, I thought was really cool. I mean, Alley Catch has kind of rebranded from Alley Cat. She's really putting herself over as a more legitimate wrestler, um, despite the fact she was Alley Bat on this show and a lot of fun. Um, she's been someone who's been picking up a lot of steam, I think, on the independence as well. So her being a surprise was, I think, really cool. This was a fun match. I do want to emphasize, and I, I'm going to over enunciate Danny Moe dressed as Trunks, top notch. Absolute top notch. Tarunks. Oh. And and and, um, uh, and apparently there was only a handful of people in there that understood that. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um, Trunks. So, yeah, I want to emphasize that uh, at one point I was chanting Trunks. And that would be Trunks, the son of Vegeta, again, if anybody's keeping score. T R U N K S. <laughs> Nothing that starts with a C. There you go. <laughs> this is on the nose as we can get for that one. Um, all right. Up next, we have Dirty Dango and Nance Warner. Jeff, I'm going to let you talk about Dirty Dango. Okay. So, so Dirty Dango comes out and he's limping. He's in his gear, but he's limping and he's saying he hurt his knee. And, and you know, he's never, you know, he's, we, well, I threw streamers, people threw streamers. He said he's never, you know, had streamers throwing at him before. It was kind of cool. And, you know, that he, he apologizes for being hurt. Um, Mance Warner comes out and thanks the crowd and says, hey, guess what? You know, you're hurt. That's all right. And what we can do is we can drink a whole case of ice cold beers and we can, you know, go in the back and hang out and, and you know, try to give these people their money. But, you know, we'll kind of take a rain check. And then after that, Dirty Dango, um, Dick Kick City, told Mance Warner, and he's on the ground inside the ring, and Dirty Dango cuts a promo. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, mean, I guess you probably can't say this on live television, but this, this is probably top five um, heel promos of all time that I've, I, that I've ever heard, like, live. Um, just on how this is a hick town and the venue called the terminal and how Mance Warner stand in a motel eight and how he, he was in the WWE for 15 years and he beat Chris Jericho his first match. And like Ryan Cottington, he owns seven properties in the Northeast. Um, you know, you pretty much call that place an S hole. I, I don't, I guess I'm trying to be PG. It was absolute gold. Just was absolute gold. Um, I, I would advise anybody, like Kato always says, the best nine dollars or ten dollars you can buy. Um, spend it on high spots, and and th this promo itself is is worth its weight in gold. It's, it just absolutely is, and I enjoyed it so much. Fellas, um, no, nah, you're spot on. You're spot on. Um, unfortunately, we don't really get to see the match here. Uh, Dango does go to throw Mance out of the ring and uh, something happens where uh, it turns out that Mance breaks. Oh, geez. Uh, I thought it was just his ankle, but there's there's very specific report um, in that he had already had successful surgery on, I believe, tibia and fibia. Um, I know that was Danhausen. Was that Danhausen? Yeah, that's yeah, that's. Oh, I apologize. Spoiler Dave. alert. Yeah, I mean that that is the next thing that we were talking about. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, to be fair though, I, mean, um, I don't think I don't think anybody knows. I mean, ankle injury. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. No, so no, no, it's, they, so, they it, announced, so yeah, it's, it's really true. crazy that Dan Housen, it was tibia fibia and then Mance was tibia fibula. fibula. So like yeah, so oh, just right add there. a little extra 
Yeah, so I had to do the Texas switch with some of those letters. Um, yeah, absolutely insane. Yeah, we kind of spoiled the Dan Housen one too. So, he did. Um, so, uh, from if I believe the report's already out, Mance has had successful surgery. Dan Housen is having surgery on Friday. Um, so, uh, yeah, he so he underwent successful surgery yesterday. Okay, good, uh, good, good. And and Dan Housen is sent for surgery Friday. Good. There's that report. Huh, five hours ago. That's why it took me forever. Um, you know, that was I'm not gonna lie, real gut punch when that happened. But um, you know, uh, Dan Gil got back on the mic, um, started healing it up again. I I hope a. First and foremost, you hope nothing but the best for Mance Warner. Um, and, of course, as we're going to talk about later, nothing but the best for Dan Housen as they recover. Um, additionally, we're going to have in our description of this video links to where you can go to support both of them while they're recovering from these injuries. Um, Dango does get back on the mic trying to eat up a little bit of time while they're getting Mance to the back um, and eventually out of the arena. Um, and we go right into, uh, facade and Kincaid renegades of flight versus Warhausen. Um, and I, I gotta say, I don't know if there's been a pop I've heard bigger, uh, in, in li live than I did for Danhausen at this show. Um, just in terms of like people in comparison to to noise, like I, I won't say everyone because I know there's some people on here that don't like him, but like it was huge. I mean, the line for Dan Housen at this event alone prior to the show was from one side of the room all the way almost out the door. And and again, from a guy where from like me where Dan Housen's not my deal, he's not. Matt's not exaggerating you now. He's really telling the truth. I mean, like from his table all the way to the door. I mean, probably, I don't know, 20, 25 feet, maybe 30 tops. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and God, you, you're right. I'm going to eat my crow on this here live. Well, on, on the recording, you know, uh, both Jeff and Ryan were like, you know, hey, go now while there's a dip uh, before the show starts. And I was thinking, ah, eh, they'll be out there before, uh, at intermission be fine uh, as we learned they were not nope. <laughs> um, well th this th this is another um rookie mistake by the young grasshopper matthew <laughs> i'm learning i'm learning we're not under yeah yeah he, there's just there's rules and there's un, you know it's kind of like baseball there's stuff you know that you just gotta know going to these shows and he learned a valuable lesson this time so hopefully you won't hey. let let me down next show but yes <laughs> We'll see the next one's in Richmond. I'm sure I'm 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 do another bad one, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I guess hope that Dan Housen is at Final Battle doing like a meet and greet. Uh, I hope but so. that line's gonna be four times as long. Yeah, yeah, it will be. Um this is a fun match. Um say what you will about Dan Housen for his stick. Um for the most part, I thought he was he was fine in ring. Of course, he's, he's, he is a character. He said it himself. He's more of a character than a wrestler. Um, he said it in his interview with Conan, which we learned the next day on our way home. Um, and, and he's living up to it. I mean, he is, he is spot on with his character. He knows who he is. Um, and it works because the crowd loved every bit of it. Um, there was one moment where uh, Warhausen was uh, teasing the tequila spot. Uh, where they play the music and Dan Housen start kicking everybody. Um, but Renegades of Flight interrupt it and switch to Thriller, and they try and teach Warhausen the, the Thriller dance. Um, Renegades of Flight both eat super kicks from the opposing team. Uh, <laughs> tequila starts. God, uh, this video will end up somewhere on Twitter, probably ours, uh, where you can hear everyone, Tequila! <laughs> If it ain't your guy, it ain't your guy. You're right, Jeff. But oh my God, is Dan Housen over? Oh no, he's he's over. 
He's absolutely um Go ahead, Connor. Oh, I was going to quickly cover the injury, if y'all don't mind. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, so, Danhausen ends up eating it coast to coast from facade. And I'm not sure if there was a uh, – just, just in terms of landing or, uh, once again, I think just a freak accident. Um, I think facade partially lands on Danhausen's leg from the coast to coast, and you have a, a clean break. Um, so Danhausen, uh, God, this is this is where this kind of sucked, because um, you he was trying to get help, but the people in the audience couldn't tell if this was gimmick or not. Like they they couldn't tell if he was like selling it. Like people thought he was like, oh, he, he needs money, you know, money to heal him or. Things like that. Jeff, I think you were the one who ran back and was like, hey, actually. No, I I, I ran back on both because, again, like, not that I'm nobody. I don't want to sound like I'm anybody special. I just happened to be kind of sitting by that turnbuckle, and I, could, I saw both of them, you know, on the floor in that one. And I literally saw it happen, and it would have been any – I mean, anybody who jumped and anybody who was laying there, it would have happened. You know, it just – you know, just there was nothing – yeah, yeah, yeah. There was nothing wrong. I mean, I mean, he landed on his leg, but not like, you know, it wasn't like he jumped all the way up and, 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 you know, um, yeah, uh, Finn Balor, his leg, like, no, no, he just did his, you know, kind of caught it with his like thigh. And that was that. I mean, it just, it's wrestling. It's not ballet. You're going to get hurt. Stuff's going to happen. Everything was safe. Everything was fine. It wasn't anything. He didn't, throw himself from the rafters from 40 feet from a ladder no it was nothing like that it just was a spot um again it's a contact sport that's this is you once you're crashing bodies and catching people and slamming people it happens right what are your thoughts on this match man uh first of all shout out here to no disqualification podcast um one of those guys actually beat jeff over there to the backstage area got the security guy yeah, yeah. Um, but then alerted the official. Um, no, this match was this this match was fine. Take out take out the stick, and it's, and it's a and it's a fine match. Um, again, not my not my tea. Um, but and to and to Jeff's point, that this is this is what you get in professional wrestling. Um, it's like the last two times plus this time we've seen a facade match, and his matches are a little more a little a little bit more flippy do but it seems like every time somebody walks into that match somebody walks out a little banged up more than usual um so i think it's just the style of match and what you got going on and it could have been warhorse in that spot or you know anybody else for that matter um but i mean if, if this is your bag it's your bag but it just what it was it was it was below average for me yeah it's it's um it's not my bag. And again, I understand that I'm in the minority because um, people love, you know, fun wrestling. But like, to, to piggyback what, all, but what, what you said, too, uh, it's just it's also part of, again, to be to clarify, these guys didn't do anything wrong. There was no wrongdoing done. Um, but I also think it's just a little bit of modern wrestling in the sense of like, not that everybody flips, but it's just that wrestling's at a high level right now with athletes and a lot of guys can do things that you just you wouldn't even dream about hell even 10 years ago you know 15 years ago um my, my, my prime example is this everybody wants to say you know omega okada and all these other wrestlers for a number you know best wrestler in the world but again like if you really really if you're basing it like on athletic ability like i always tell you guys i mean ricochet would be number one you know, if we're, yeah. if we're just talking about like, you know, what guys can physically do in a ring, you know, safely. Um, but I mean, I just think it's, you know, it's a modern wrestling thing. You know, it's, it's, this is where we're going. And I think it's just like any other contact sport. You start taking more chances, you start banging a little bit more. You, you know, people are getting bigger, stronger, faster. It's, it's, it comes with the territory. Um. Warhorse drops an elbow on, I believe, Kincaid to pick up the win. Um, it may have been Facade. Um, but, but Warhorse drops the elbow, picks up the pin, and uh, we get out of there. Um, 
Up next is our NGW Eastern State Championship match featuring Shook D versus No Way. They did announce him as No Way Jose at the show, so I'm not sure which one to specifically were to use here. Um, we're going to stick with, I think, his impact name for the time being. But, uh, you know, our man No Way came out, and uh, Cotton and I had to sneak into that conga line, had to shake it a little bit all the way around the terminal, you know. <laughs> Harris, that was a fun time there. That was a lot. Of, that was cool. I thought um, definitely something. Whoop! You're on mute. Yeah, God, you're muted. Uh, there we go. Uh, never mind. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Um, this was another one, and and uh, honestly, this is probably a needed match where there's a lot of comedy in it. Um. Especially just because after uh, the the back to back injuries, I know a lot of people in the audience were suddenly very like, "Whoa, this doesn't happen here very often. What's going on?" Um, so this brought a lot of comedy and some laughs in um, for everyone, I think, except for Jeff Hall, who was ready to leave the vicinity and eat his subway. <laughs> if you again, if you know me, you know Shug is not my guy. Um, nothing personal. He, he's, he's, he's fine. Like, and he's over, but, um, you know, again, like the, the place needed a little, they, they did need a little more fun after what happened. And also I, I would, uh, I would say that with the time that they kind of had left over, I guess, you know, they were probably trying to fill, you know, fill up some time and we probably, probably kind of had probably had that going on. Um, but again, not my cup of tea, you know, this match, um, but a bunch of people putting it over. So, I mean, you know, who am I? I, I had a lot of fun watching it. Shug D came out as where, where's Waldo um, and was hiding in the crowd and in the vicinity. He would put on the hat and the glasses and just, and no way would lose track of where he is. Referee wouldn't be able to find him. Um, Obviously, uh, not something that you probably want in your serious professional wrestling, but I, I just I think this is a much needed laugh after everything that had just happened. Um, and, and it was fun, you know. These two guys had a lot of decent work and, and some fun chemistry in the ring, a lot of like the whole like, hey, that's my bit. Don't do the dancing bit. That's me. Um, and other things like that. Uh, Shug ends up getting the win uh, when No Way goes for his pop-up fastball and hooks the head and turns it almost into a uh, front chancery pin. Um, so sneaky win. No Way doesn't really lose anything from the loss and that, you know, he didn't get, like, knocked out or anything like that. Yeah. Um, fun, fun match, in my opinion. Definitely a little bit of a tension breaker, uh, I felt. Um, uh, then Shug gets on the mic and says, you know, hey, every time I always saw our names, it was people comparing us because we're both black and we both dance. Um, and people are going to have to learn that, you know, just because we do, we like similar things doesn't mean we're the same people. Street profits aren't private party, um, which is a, a good remark because that's been a huge thing on the internet here for a while. Um, so... Uh, just I, I thought it was a nice, nice match. Definitely eased some tensions in the room. No way, Jose is much bigger in person than I realized. Oh, okay, so uh, you literally took the words out of my mouth. I was going to tell you I don't want to cut in, but no way, Jose is huge. And again, and again, again, when you like I said, live wrestling is nothing like it, and that's why it's live wrestling. That's why it's the greatest thing in the world. But when you see some, some guys like TV actually doesn't do them any justice because when you see them in person, um, I mean, he was huge. Uh, another guy um, that 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 was like that. I, I got tickets to what I win tickets to. I think it was a raw um, Morrissey um, or Big Cass. Him live. I mean, he was just massive, just massive. And no way, Jose with the, the, the same deal like uh, he, obviously you know he's big he's a professional wrestler but man when I, big. Him, no, when I saw him in person I was like 
okay, man, like you're big, like as in like, if you weren't wrestling, I don't know, you know, Hey, what do you do? I'm a janitor. Well, janitors ain't that big. <laughs> so, um, yeah. man, uh, for, for emphasis, like, man, we did, he, he gave everyone in the Congo line a high five as we were coming out, like, Hey, I'm gonna start this match. Let's go. Let's go. And kind of like get, get to your seats, go back to yeah. your seats, but in a polite, nice way. Um, and I was like, yeah, this is, I am six foot. Why am I extending this much? <laughs> He's a good dude. He's a, he's, a, he's a really good dude. Yeah, he seemed like a genuinely nice person. Um, yeah, okay. I do wish we got to see a little bit more of him, I think, outside of the ring in terms of, like, in meet and greet stuff. But I do think a lot of the uh, – where I get to after the show here, but more than – and and, and to be clear, not that I never thought he wasn't a good dude, but but also what people don't understand, too, when you, when you see ex-stars or just wrestlers in general. Um, and, and this isn't a next-gen thing. This is – indie wrestling ring of honor yeah anyway uh, impact this is anywhere when you meet wrestlers some are most most are really nice but some aren't you know like they you know I'm not gonna name any names but i'm just saying like okay no, nobody on this show like li listen like just just it's just like people in in your your day-to-day -day yeah. life you know you see them on tv you think you know them you think you know who they are and then you meet them and then sometimes they're waiting actually you thought sometimes they are not so hats off to to guys and girls that are, you know, nice and and just really really genuine because because I think they they don't have to be, we're 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 paying to see them not the other way around you know, um, but yeah good dude, yeah just genuinely seem like a nice guy. Uh, Shogun's his little promo with, you know you've been in the mountaintop once I can't wait to see you back there, um, which once again. Very nice, very nice sentiment by Shug. Shug's been doing this thing lately. Um, the past two NGW shows, he's cut a little bit of a longer promo, just kind of putting over the shows and pulling over the talent. And man, um, of course, I was rocking my Shug shirt earlier today, and uh, I didn't have it on for the show here. Um, but man, the, the Journeyman is such a good little uh, nickname for him because he has been just about everywhere. He they, uh, Literally, while we're doing the show, uh, they announced that he's going to be on Fightful's um the list in your boy show tomorrow um he's all over the place on the independent scene he had like i think three shows this past weekend prior to ngw um he's he's everywhere man and like you know whether you like his injury work or not whether you like what he's doing you know that's one thing the dude's work ethic he's all over the place and you can just tell he just loves wrestling um and that's that's such a cool thing for me when you have guys who just love the business yeah yeah and again sugar not my cup of tea but think of what you just said though matt and to the to the to the audience listening a guy's guy and girls are doing what three four shows maybe a weekend three shows a weekend you times that by 52 you know you know what i mean like just when i would include just, like weekday shows you know? yeah 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 yeah. we're not even talking about like weekday shows or not spot shows but like hey do me a solid do this show you know what i'm saying or in the yeah. summertime hey come do the fair do the firehouse do you know there's all types of wrestling in the summertime you can spin a map and put a finger down and guarantee they got some type of wrestling within 45 minutes of that place so it it just goes to show you how these so these these guys and girls put their bodies on the line and um you know, just like Mance and Danhausen, you know, how you can work Any 15, 15, 10 years and be fine, you know, and then one freak accident. So, you know, just, just putting stuff in perspective to people and what these people, and this is their profession that they chose. And I understand that. But like I said, just the stuff that they're doing with their bodies, you know, it's, it's amazing. Definitely. Um, one of the coolest things is that uh, NGW on their Facebook page, um, and I think on Twitter, but I'm not positive. Put a picture of Shug D and one of the one of the pros, Cody, watching the NFL game day on the Titan drawing because he was just there that early, you know, to see if they needed anything. Just being a part of like, hey, we good for a night? What you need? Yeah. Um, they're just, they're they're wrestlers, but they're regular people. You know? Yeah. Just always seems to be on top of it. Um, and, and I got to tell you, I do just love that. Um, really, really just appreciate that kind of people. Um, 
in in wrestling, but just in the world in general. Yeah. Um, main event time. Who boy, main event time. Rich Swan defends the NGW championship against Trey Lamar, Alex Zane, and Matt Cross. Uh, Matt Cross does pick up the win here to become the new NGW champion. Uh, and God, I love this. I gotta tell you, Jeff. I don't know how much you like. Like I, I have, I have the results pulled up here um, from four one one mania. Just to you know, refresh. Yeah, yeah. Can I tell you how great it is? Because your video is one of the references for the Matt Cross match, where uh, after Matt Cross wins the belt, he just holds it up. We got, we got Jeff Hall right there. Uh, is it really? Man. Yeah. You, you, you know, um, uh, shocker to everybody. Your boy's bad with technology. Um, that I get credit, or did, did oh we get... yeah, they have you tag or not tag, but they have you oh, picture okay. you're at and everything. They just yeah. took the exact thing. There we go. Just Jeff Hall <laughs> getting some love on all of uh, all of wrestling, uh, just like that first NGW show where you ended up your uh, contributing to high spots. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. I, I mean, listen, listen, I, I don't own wrestling. I don't, you know, I'm just a Mark who loves wrestling like everybody else. But I, I, I love I love watching these guys and girls do their thing and get to the heights they want to get to. This was a really fun match, though. Um, really fun four-way. Uh, Matt Cross, you know, is great. And Rich Swan is definitely good. Man, Alex Zane in person is so much more enjoyable than all of these other shows where I've seen him. Uh, like on on fight and on uh, Ring of Honor, um, he is a dude. Trey Lamar, man, it is just a matter of time till he blows up. I feel um, that dude. Uh, I was super pumped when uh, Next Gen was coming to Richmond the first, not Richmond, but coming to Virginia the first time pre COVID, um, and Trey Lamar was on the show. And, uh, man, finally getting to see him live. That dude, some things he just makes look so easy. Yeah, I'm – shocker. Um, well, one, Matt Cross is the best. The yeah, absolute. yeah. M-Dog 20, baby. Yeah, and you guys know me. I'm not a flip flippy guy. But Trey Lamar, it just – it's different. Mm-hmm. Like, looks like everything's with a purpose. He's just not he, – a lot of – wrestlers now they think that i mean like you have to do it that way well you don't but he's doing it to do it the right way Mm -hmm. i don't know it's it's hard to explain it it doesn't look like he's trying to do anything he's just doing you know i I never look at trey lamar and look at his stuff like well why did you do that or like you didn't have to do that no 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 it just looks like hey this is how i wrestle this is what i do i'm not trying to be anybody else light i'm i'm trey lamar he he has it like when, when you talk about the dude has it he's only 24 you know who trained him johnny gargano and candace LeRae. now that i see that like oh my god that makes so much sense yeah and, and, and listen like i i'm not knocking johnny gargano no but, no but boy trey lamar's got he's doing he, he's doing stuff at gargano <laughs> And you can never dream of Jack. <laughs> um, man, yeah, sky's the limit for Trey Lamar. He was the one who, like, I, I love Matt Cross. Um, have gotten to see him at every every single NGW show now. But uh, he was the one who came out of the show for me going, like, Trey Lamar, that's the one. You yeah. know? Um, I, I really thought he was winning it. And then Matt Cross came out, and he just had that look on him. You know, <laughs> like – um, we, we used to give Sasha uh, Banks a lot of uh, a lot of crap for having a poo poo face. The whole like you know she's losing the belt tonight or she's losing this title match face. Um, and also like you know when she was winning it, but you know, um, it, it, it was just a vibe on on Matt Cross. You knew the second he came out, he had the one leg sleeve up. It was over. <laughs> yeah, um, I had a feeling. Like, I had a feeling he might win, but, like, not like, you know, like, oh, he's going to win, book it. No, not at all. But I was like, man, I wonder if they're actually going to put it on cross. Um, and I was right. And, again, like, not right from a point of, you know, like I told you so. No, I just got lucky. But I just had a feeling that they might put it on cross. Um, and, and, again, this match was great. He was great. Um, Swan, you know, has been a 
um, model, you know, NGW citizen champion. He was great. Seven, I don't have the number, but so what? Seven hundred and some odd days. Something ridiculous like that. Seven like, I mean, he carried it. Seven thirty-eight. Essentially, over two years, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, now, mind you, probably, COVID year in that, but still. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, you know, that's still impressive. Yeah. Um. Yeah, really, 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 really good match. We also. Uh, we also forgot um, the costume contest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this was a fun one too. So they, they did go around JB, the, the heel money manager, and uh, oh my God, I'm blanking on his name. Who? The, the wrestler who used to be with JB, who was the other judge. Um, oh my God. Um, God. Never in the story guy. I'm um, Cade. No, 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 it wasn't Caden Sade. Um, it wasn't Caden Sade. Oh, my God. All right, well, while you're figuring that out. Um, so, very rare. I mean, you've been watching wrestling forever. Very rarely, you know, like now, like when you get caught in the work or get caught in an angle, it's great. Just because, you know, once you get older, you've seen everything, blah, 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 blah. blah. So, this spot that they did was just absolutely great because nobody nobody saw it coming i was fooled you were fooled i mean everybody in that whole damn place was fooled um i mean i guess i'll let you tell it matt but you you, you got the return well not the return but you got a spot from sue young it was absolutely great uh yeah so uh they they get the lost boys end up joining uh the uh halloween costume contest Plan. Um, that's the plan. And that's the thing is that like uh everyone apparently uh every year they do a who's who's in the Michael Myers mask um around Halloween time for uh for NGW. And they thought it was someone in the Lost Boys, I believe, or or uh something like that. I, I missed well, who the, who JB thought it was. They, um, they thought it was everybody not named Sue Young. Yeah, so it is Sue Young. JB turns around, he gets the red mist to the face. Um, some fans are talking about how they had it on their clothes as well. Uh, just, just fantastic. Uh, no one was ready for it. Um, everyone who was in the contest got a, a T-shirt, I believe. Uh, it's just really fun, man. Um, I Kenji Brea. Kenji Brea is the name. Kenji I'm Brea. Like, I'm thinking Kenji Brea. Yeah. Um, he was he was out there doing the costume contest with JB. He was great, also. He is great, man. Oh man, uh, we, well, he's we, great. He's great, but I mean, like his stick he was doing in this was you know, great. Like, yeah. happy with JB was great, and 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 again, next gen doing it right, and shout out to JB doing it right. If if you're gonna get the mist, now I'm not saying he needed to be in an all white suit, but <laughs> nice white t shirt, so it looks like a million dollars when when you get sprayed with when when, when you get misted. Yeah, and. Um, Man, he uh he sold it too. I can't see, I can't see. I'm blind. He had the ref taking him out here. We were like, huh, huh. He's eh? becoming a favorite of mine. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, kind of. He's got a bit of Jim Cornette in him. He um, does. He does. Yeah. Speaking of, yo, if you are the fan in the costume contest, dressed as Jim Cornette, I I need you to like send us a message or something, because you're the goat. He was spot on. I know. I, w I was trying to get a picture with him, but we kind of, you know, toward the end, everybody kind of ra uh, ran out of there. But when we had to applaud for him, trust me, I no surprise here. I'm a cornet guy. Um, um, I'm part of the cult, but yeah, I put him over. It was this whole thing was fun. I mean, I, to be fair, I mean, I've I've gone to wrestling on Halloween a couple times. It's just been so long ago, so you know, you forget that you can, you know, do a it's couple fun. more different. You know, just different things that you wouldn't be able to do on on on, on a Halloween night. Um, man, just an absolute blast. You know, it was like the really like the coolest thing for me. Um, was after the show, after they, uh, you know, given a lot of props to Matt Cross, Calvin Tankman, Alley Catch, and the referee. I think just Spo. Um, mm -hmm 
came out and they were selling all of Mance's stuff so they could go and after uh, at the hospital give him the money. Um, I think Tankman even sold some of his stuff that he had there available for Mance. Um, the support for Mance Warner was huge. Uh, obviously, that was the big concern. His injury looked uh, a bit worse than Dan Housen's, um, just in terms of like when they happened and the reaction um, from everybody. Yeah. Um, but just just the character of Alley Catch and Calvin Tankman and, and, and official spell, you know, that that spoke a lot to me. Calvin Tankman, man, um, we talked about a guy who has it all. Um, every every show that we've been at, uh, he's been there so far. Um, I really hope he does make it to Richmond as well. Um, you know, uh, we talked about going up to him after the first NGW show, the Party Bowl, and how, how almost grateful he was that we were there. We, came, we, we were like, hey, man, we can't tell you how awesome we thought your match was. We, you know, we, we can't thank you enough. And he was, hey, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. You know, every show he's been at, he's always been really cool and really uh, awesome to, to fans. And this was just icing on the cake. Calvin Tankman is that guy for me. No, he, he he's a stand-up guy. Um, me and Dwight have um, – him and Mance Warner, when they killed each other for 30 minutes – tables and doors and chairs and everything else we have signed pieces of doors by Mance Warner and Calvin Tankman just because those guys are good guys <laughs> pretty the cool. absolute best um I, I do hope once again for a very speedy and, and quick recovery for Mance Warner and Dan Housen. both those guys seem like they are um just top tier guys um I wanted. To, I was gonna say this a little more for Monday, but I also got put out there. Danhausen, incredibly smart, um, using that Young Bucks merch method plan. Um, within within like two days of being injured, he already has a shirt out. Um, very injured, but still very evil. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, 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 it's it's smart, man. It's smart. Um, I've, I've been talking about with. You know that some wrestlers have a bigger reach for me when my oldest brother messages me, Jim, and is like, yo, do you know that Mance got hurt? And I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> um, so, you know, th these are guys who are top tier guys. You know, you just want nothing but the best for them. But this was this was a very good show. Um, I do think crowd reaction was a little hard to get back into it following the injuries. I think, I think everyone kind of struggled and was a little bit more on edge. Um, but we tried really hard, I think, to rally for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, I got to tell you, I can't wait for bogus journey where they come to Richmond Sunday, uh, November 28th. Uh, we already know Matt Cross. We know, Moose is going to be there, um, hopefully bringing the Impact World title. Yeah. Because um, that's what champs do. Um, Rich Swan should be there. Uh, Facade is included on, the, on the, the poster that's been put out, so hopefully Facade as well. Um, God, I feel like I'm missing someone. JTG. JTG's on the poster. Yeah. Uh, he's front and center, so. Good. Yeah, I, interesting. I love JTG. Yeah, man. He's a dude. I love love him. Can't wait. Can't wait to see him again. I can't wait for the show. Oh, now, of course, I got it up. Um, Caleb Conley. And they're partnering with UEW. Um, United Elite Wrestling, I believe. So. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited for the show. If you are in the Virginia area or if you're uh, comfortable traveling, man, come on over. We want to fill this place up. Um, I know um, me and my hood rat friends are – I mean, we may be – we may be like 30 deep. Like, I, <laughs> like say, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Like maybe uh, about 30 deep when it's all said and done, you know what I'm saying? Could the, probably the PWO combine. factor, I hope, is very real. I'm trying to bring my sister. I don't think she's ever been to a wrestling show. Um, trying to bring my brother in law. I'm trying to bring both of my brothers. Um, trying to bring uh, some guys from the University of Alvernia. 
who are on the coaching staff who love wrestling down. I'm all in, man. Like, let's do it. Yeah. Um, and it's right after Thanksgiving. So, you know, treat yourself a little bit. I agree. <laughs> um, but with that, guys, we're going to close out here. We went into a lot more detail, had a lot more conversation about this. Um, as always, if you like what you're watching, you can help us by supporting us. Uh, at ko-fi.com slash pwo123 it's as easy as one two three and for the small price of a cup of coffee you help us so much in making these, these travel possible making us uh giving us the ability to go to these shows so thank y'all so much um of course check out the links below uh in the description you're going to have also the links for uh ways to support mance warner and dan Housen. uh and with that guys that is it that is the the review for uh, Next Gen Wrestling's Nightmare in Old City. Can't wait for Bogus advent, uh, Bogus Journey. So uh, with that, guys, goodbye and good night. Bang.